Another indie box, guys. Let's find out what's inside. Which one is it? Nuclear Throne. Or is it Nuclear Throne? Let's see. Another indie box challenge. I need to get up to date with indie box so I can start doing these challenges. Once I get up to speed, guys, which will probably be never, if I get back to speed with like the whole indie box schedule, then I will go ahead and try the indie box challenge and let you guys know and send video or whatever the hell they want me to do. But let's see what's in here. And of course, the key I will give to you guys later. I've heard about this game. It is from. Oh, it doesn't even say the name on here. But I know that logo, Blambeer. I love Blambeer. I'm kind of a beer connoisseur, so I like it when a company is named Blambeer. Nah, I'm kidding. I'm just messing with you because I have a subscriber who's over in the Netherlands, and he absolutely hates it when people mispronounce that studio name. He tells me that the actual name, and yes, he did go off on me on this, he tells me that the actual pronunciation of it is Flambeer. So that's how you're supposed to pronounce it, Flambeer. And the reason why is because, well, the reason why that pronunciation is correct is because as you can see, it's a little bear, and then there's a flame behind him. So it's Flambeer, not Vlambeer, as us Americans like to say. Anyways, Nuclear Throne, I've heard about this game, but I've never played it before. And, um, that's nifty. Came with a little sleeve on there. Yeah, this looks like a really cool game. I don't know, I've heard that it's sort of like a roguelike. I, I don't know. But I've heard that it's a very, very good game. Let's see what's in here. Something big. What the heck? These are like little figures or something. That's pretty cool. Let's... Yeah, let's open it up. There's this guy. Come on. Ah, it's like a little space cadet dude. Again, I've never played this game, so I don't know what these guys are, what they do, I have no clue. But that's pretty cool, it's actually a really nice looking little figure. I mean, it's not perfect quality, but definitely better than anything I would expect in an indie box. Not to say they're bad quality, but I mean, it's usually like the last one, that little badge thing that was in the last Armello box, I think that was like made of plastic, and I was pretty, pretty disappointed with that after I figured that out. There's another one, kinda looks like the same dude, but kinda wrapped up. Interesting. It'll be fascinating to know what these guys do in the game, because I have no clue. Here's a three-headed guy. Come on, focus! There we go. Really nice. Like I said, the paint isn't bad on this. It's actually pretty, pretty nice looking. Alright. Done with that. Let me put all this to the side. Alright, what's next? Trying things at random. Soundtrack. Cool. I don't know if I've heard anything about the music. I don't know. Some of these have a fantastic music, but otherwise... Is this a magnet? It looks almost like a fridge magnet. I think it is. It's like in two sections or something. I hope that's not cracked. Or no, no, wait! Ah, look! A USB drive! Wait, is this the actual game? Is this how they shipped it? I wonder, because, you know, they always come in that little card that the game comes with. You know, there's something big in here that I should just get out right now. It's a maggot. It's a big worm. The green spooky stuff. Oh, wait, wait, it's a pouch. This month's box is pretty damn good. A little pouch, but there's nothing in here. Eh. Oh, well, a little maggot change purse thing. Cool. What else? What else? So we got these things. Alright. Here's the little indie box newsletter. Let's see, is that the actual game? This chicken thing. Oh, so much plastic that I gotta get out of here. Let's see. Two. USB. Oh, wait, wait. It starts a new trend for indie box. Wow, so they might all be coming out like this now. Uh, custom USB and. Okay, so custom USB of a playable chicken character. So do you play a chicken in this game? What? Okay, I don't know. But cool, so this is the game. That's really nice. And, uh, like for instance, I was still playing Freedom Planet recently, and as you know, they would come out on these little USB sticks. These card stick things. So you see, they would come out like that, but now, I guess they'll be coming out like this, which is really cool. I like this, I like this form factor. 
adds a little bit of character to it. And eh, I'll just put that together later. Let's see what else is in here. Nuclear throne. Oh, you know what? I shouldn't. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to show that because that's a PlayStation code. So I think they gave me a Steam key and a PlayStation key. So I'm going to keep the PlayStation key for myself. But don't worry, you guys will still get the Steam key. And yeah, pretty nice little instruction manual. I love that they're full colored manuals. That is such a rarity these days. And that's really sad. I, I wish that we didn't live in that world where manuals are a rarity. Uh, that's a pretty cool sticker. Indie box sticker, and there's some Illuminati shit. I have no clue who this guy is, but I know he's on my dollar bill. Um, with a golden gun. Huh, that's weird. Anything else in the box? Yes, there is something else. More stickers? Yeah, I think these are stickers. Okay, so I guess we're against these guys. Are these the same as these guys? I don't know. Like I said, I've never played this game. But, anything else in the box? Nope. Let me get you guys that key. Away with you. What was the challenge? Uh, create cosplay of a hero or anything. Oh, okay, so this one you don't even record like gameplay. You're supposed to cosplay or something. What? What? <laughs> Who the hell is this? James the Captain Morgan as steroids. What? Okay, I think James is the guy from Indie Box, but okay, so he's trying to cosplay as that guy. That's weird. Ah, this could have been fun, but then again, I don't show my face, so I would have to be somebody who doesn't have a face. Alright, here's the Steam key, guys. Whoever gets that, please tell us what you thought about the game. And in the meantime, time for me to get this chicken's head off and play me some Nuclear Throne. From Vlambeer. No, no, I'm kidding. Vlambeer. Alright, guys, I sunk way too much time into this game. It's a twin-stick shooter, but a better description of it is to say that it's a roguelike. It does have a structured stage progression, but the layout of the levels themselves are completely randomized. The game is very fun and very addictive, that's why it took so much of my time. It's one of those games that you can just pick up and play any time, because it usually only takes a few minutes until you get a game over. And that's because this game is extremely difficult. It is one of the hardest games I've played all year. You will be amazed at how quickly things can turn to shit. I even had to ask online and with a friend, I was like, is this game really this difficult or is it just me? But nope, it's not just me. The game is infamous for being so hard. And usually when people are complaining about it, others will tell them just get good. Which is fair enough, the game is still enjoyable even though it's hard and so you really just need to get better at it. But to those people I saw who keep giving that advice of get good, let me tell you this. If you chose one of the characters in Nuclear Throne as your avatar, then you have no right to tell people to get good. You cannot expect people to be as devoted as you are to this game. A lot of us got other shit to do and different things we want to play. So in that sense, the high difficulty is unfair to a lot of people. And in fact, I still haven't beaten this game. Partly because it won't let me. I downloaded the PS4 version, which of course this indie box did come with, and it has a glitch in the final stages. So 9 times out of 10, it just kills me off and gives me an error message. So yeah, the PS4 version is a mess. Sometimes it'll glitch up and kick you out after you exit a level. And this game is frustrating to begin with, so that only hurts even more. But to make it a little less frustrating for you, let me share a little trick that I found. One of the cool things about this game is that it has secrets and hidden levels, and they can warp you ahead a few stages. So check this out, when you begin the game at level 1-1, don't shoot anything. Just go around and collect the items and everything, but don't kill anything. Then if you did that correctly, this boss shows up. This boss isn't supposed to appear until level 1-3, but once he appears, kill him immediately. And if it works, it takes you to a hidden level. Finish that level, and then it skips you ahead. But as much as I hate to say it, you are going to have to get good to use this. Because of course it's skipping you ahead, so things are going to get hard very quickly. But at least it gets a really annoying sewer level out of the way. There's some other interesting stuff here as well. Like for instance, the gibberish that's spoken in the game, that is actually fully translatable. In the printed manual that came with the indie box, it tells you what everything means. Even though this game is brutally hard, I still gotta recommend it. And as much as it pains me to say it, I gotta tell you, stay away from the PS4 version. Not only is it buggy, but I also think it's incomplete. I messed around with the PC version for just a few minutes, and I was able to get a flamethrower weapon that was never in the PlayStation version. I didn't spend enough time with the PC version to know if there's anything else, but again, I'm just gonna throw it out there, I think the PS4 version is missing stuff. And one final recommendation, do not play this game if you have high blood pressure. Seriously guys, it's really fucking difficult. And that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.